She multiplies it and makes it bigger and better. Of course, this is not only to the abled woman, but also to the disabled woman who has told herself that against all odds, I can be who I want to be. Welcome to Against All Odds on the Nigerian Television Authority, a program that brings to your doorstep the lives of persons with disability. Mm. And of course, our focus light today is on Lois Alta, a woman who has dared disability to his face and said she is only disabled in one aspect, but every other aspect is alert and intact. She has told herself that I dare to dream and achieve everything I desire to become in life. Don't go away, stay with us as we will be right back. My name is Toshima Pius Ikerabe. <laughs> this is Against All Odds. Very happy to see you here. Uh, thank you so much for letting us into your home. You're welcome. We appreciate breaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you stay in this house alone? No. I live with my adopted daughter of four years old. Her name is Zina. Oh. And my niece, Godia. They have all gone to school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when they're not around, you actually move around yourself, doing things yourself? Yes, when they are not around, I usually go to the kitchen and cook and do some house curls by myself. After all, before they joined me, I was living alone. Really? Yes, so most times I do my house curls by myself. It's only my clothes that I take to the dry cleaner. Hmm. So Donna, you're welcome. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Okay. Yeah, we're doing a documentary with NTA. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Thank you. Is your friend? Yeah, he's my colleague. He's the founder of Porter's Gallery Initiative. Okay. Yeah, we are into development work together oh. on the betterment of lives of persons with disabilities. Oh, in wow, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so what's Potter's? What's Potter's, Potter's, Potter's gallery. gallery? Okay, Potter's Gallery. From the word Potter. Uh, Potter. Okay, you're an artist. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> it's an arts organization run by people with disability, mostly artists, and we use arts to talk about the lives and struggles, the resilience of people with disability. Mm. We use all art forms or all genres of the arts. Okay. Mm. So we are about 10 years old, you know, through the arts we've been able to, you know, raise awareness about issues of people living with disabilities. Okay. Yeah. You do exhibitions, exhibitions and all that. Are you also an artist? <laughs> no, no. Okay, I'm not. okay. Exhibitions, theater, performances, oh. music. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Poetry. That is what we do. Oh, wow. That's a huge one. Yes. Yeah. Ah, I think we'll have to storm your gallery one of these days. <laughs> so for how long have you been in Abuja? Let me get water. Yeah. Thank you very much for yeah. the water. Yeah, I was here since um, when I was 18 years old. Okay. And I'm 38 now. Wow. So that's <laughs> a 20 years. Yes. Oh. I'm sure you like to share your story with us. Mm. You like to tell us 
how everything happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Proud okay. of my story. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you tell us. We'll start from the very top. So I asked, were you born like this? No. I was born as a normal child. I was affected by polio when I was two years old and I thank God for the family I was born into. They so much believed in me. They were able to send me to school and after my secondary school I could not go further. Even before the secondary school when I saw myself differently from other children, inferiority complex set in, low self-esteem set in. Until my mom really talked to me, she said, Lois, you have to accept yourself. Lois, you have to thank God that you are alive. And you have to be very proud of yourself. So from that time, I began to mingle with other children because before then, I didn't want to mingle with children in my class, my compound, my church, and anywhere I, f I found myself. But I was able to conquer that through the help of God and my mother. So after my secondary school, I could not go further because I come from a very poor family background. So I started selling recharge card and making phone calls. And I was able to send myself back to school. I got a diploma in public administration from, second, from the University of Abuja. Mm -hmm. And through the help of my classmate and um, passionate individuals like Mrs. Mekori, I was able to finish my diploma successfully. Then after my diploma, 11 of us were opportune to get an opportunity to do an industrial training in NNPC. And I was lucky from that number, I was the only person that was retained mm. as NNPC support staff, though it was not a permanent job, mm. but it was a good one. I never knew that one of the HR officers was asking questions about me. Mm. Is she diligent in her work? Is she committed? Is she passionate? Does she come to work? And those questions were positive, so she was very proud of me. And that got me the opportunity to retain as a support staff mm -hmm. in NNPC. So from there, I pick a form for BSc, and today I'm a graduate wow. of public administration from University of Abuja. So from that point, I also um, felt very bad a, on a good day when I was going to work in my car, I saw a person with disability crawling by the roadside without a wheelchair. So I, I felt very bad. Something pricked me. Now what am I doing to ensure that this set of people, my friends, I call them my friends mm -hmm. because I'm also one of them, get their rights as individuals. So I came up with an idea of See the Seed Foundation through the mentorship of Irene Bangwell, Donald Onanka, um, Dan Dissin, and other persons with disabilities that I, that I, 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 I always um, follow their activities. Okay. So See the Seed came into existence from 2011 till date. So I see my disability as a bridge and not a barricade. I see it as a blessing and not a cause. And I also see my disability as, a, as an opportunity to change the world. This wheelchair is just a device that helps me move around from point A to point B. Mm. I have 99.9 .9 abilities in me. Mm. It was only 
polio that is a disability that, 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 that stopped me from using my legs. But I have my hands to drive, I have my hands to write proposals that will bring impact to millions of persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I have my brain to think of so many ideas, innovative ideas, intelligent ideas that will create a positive change in disability community. I know you're aware that we have over 25 million Nigerians with disabilities, which for too long we have been excluded, discriminated, and underrepresented in our government policies and programs. And that moved me to concluded 2019 elections. Mm. I ran for House of Representatives in Amag Buari Federal Constituency on the platform of Accord Party. Mm. It will also interest you to know that out of 4,680 people that ran for House of Representatives in the 2019 elections, there were 569 women. And I was the first and the only woman with disability from that list. So God has used me to break history, to break records, and to make history in the political space. Mm. Now, persons with disabilities, women and young people are inspired by my action to plan for 2023 or subsequent elections. Wow. So it, it was a good outing. I got 2,000 plus votes for my first attempt. And from there, many opportunities kept coming. A week after election, that was February 23rd. Mm. On the election day, I felt fulfilled. I felt very proud. I felt excited voting for myself for the first time. And after the elections, I got nominated to travel to Uganda and represent persons with disabilities in politics. I was nominated by Westminster Foundation for Democracy, and that project was supported by Commonwealth. So it was a good one. And on International Women's Day, that passed, my story was shared by UN Women Executive Director in New York, and my video to that they did about my story was also shown on the screen with many international observers in UN headquarters in New York. Many organizations have been inviting me to come forward and share my experience. And I have been traveling in this country and internationally sharing my ideas. It will also interest you to know that I am the first black woman with disability from Africa that was named a young global leader of the World Economic Forum in 2017. Mm -hmm. I am an Ashoka um, change maker scholar. I am a Mandela Washington Fellow where 500 um, youths were selected from Sub Saharan Africa in 2014, and I was one of them. We traveled to the US, we were trained on leadership skills at the best universities. I was at Arizona State University for two months. Then we had a presidential summit in Washington, D.C., where we met global leaders like former President Obama and his wife. I got a handshake from him and a hug from Michelle Obama. Michelle told me to my ears that she's very proud of me. So you could see that disability is just a word. It can never stop me from becoming who I want to be. It can never stop me from achieving my dreams. And by my own concept, I changed the D-I-S to T-H-I-S. That is disability, not disability. 
wow, you've been able to achieve so much, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm sure when you look back, you'll just be grateful to God mm -hmm. that He actually um, put all those ideas into you to be able to help humanity, mm -hmm. which you're still doing. And I'm sure you still have the intention to go further. This ability yes. definitely has a future, okay? Yeah. So, you would like to share with us your dreams, what you need, what you still desire to aspire? Yes. I have plans to run for an office again in 2023. Yeah, Mr. President tried three times before he got it. So I will also plan for 2023. And for my personal life, I'm also planning to set up a family where I will have my own kids and train them to become great leaders more than me. Yeah, and in my organization, I plan to see in the next 10 years, I want to see buildings being accessible to persons with disabilities. That's our infrastructural um, buildings. You have ramps, our schools, our offices, our parks and gardens, our um, social centers should be accessible to persons with disabilities. Information too. That's ICT should also be accessible for the hearing impaired. A percentage should be reserved for graduates with disabilities. And when we talk about our transport systems, are they really um, accessible? Are they disability friendly? Yes, are they disability friendly? And so many issues, our educational systems, are not inclusive. Mm. If I had attended a special education, I wouldn't be here today. That's the truth. Because the way they, they teach children in special schools is different from the way they teach children in the other schools. So I want to see our educational system being mainstreamed and inclusive. You did mention you actually have an adopted baby girl yeah. and um, your cousin. And then now you've mentioned you, you, you're ready to raise a family. Um, that's actually going private, yes. But um, are we expecting that anytime soon? <laughs> yes. You just want to dive into that a little. <laughs> yes, by God's grace, I'm in a serious relationship. And very soon I will send an invitation. Wow, I cannot wait to be part of that. Yeah, yeah, thank I you. I cannot wait. <laughs> because me and you personally will have a dance. Yes, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what actually spurred you into adopting a child? I lost my only sister to cancer in 2016. And before she died, she was married with a child. She left her at 12 months old. And um, the family, both her husband's family and my family decided to say, okay, Lois, you can do this. And even before then, she wrote a letter and kept it under my pillow that if anything happened to her, she wants her baby to remain with me and I should train her till she grows up. So that was what happened. I could not say no when we finally lost her, when she passed on, on January 1st, 2016. Mm. I come from a Christian home. My, my mom was a godly woman. But um, though I lost them, my, I lost my mom in 2011 and my dad in 2014. They, they were my backbone. They were my backbone when they were alive. 
through the advice, the mentorship, the support, and so many things. My mom is my role model. So I, 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 she gave birth to, my mom and dad gave birth to 11 children. Oh. Though we lost, we lost five. Now we are six. And the six, I'm the only lady with five brothers. So in life there are challenges. Yeah. Even the normal person who thinks is able mm. has a lot of challenges. Mm. Would you like to share your challenges with us? Yes. We have challenges of discrimination, marginalization, stigmatization, and stereotyping. Yes, discrimination in the sense that um, the general public see us as people that need pity. We are treated as second class citizens. That, that is why we call it um, the charity model. Instead of government advocating for our right to be given to us as citizens, you will see that um, even um, government is doing a program for us, they prefer to do it on a charity level by saying, okay, they need food to eat. So they start by sharing bags of rice or some other stuffs that will not last us longer. Yeah. So the discrimination is, is much. We need to move from charity model to human rights model. The human rights model is what will give us our rights as citizens first. They see us as people first before the challenge. That is human rights model. They try to provide employment for us. They ensure the transport system are disabled friendly. Our infrastructures too are accessible to us. Our economic development is also inclusive. We have rights to banking halls, to have access to banking halls, we have rights to education, rights to employment, rights to transport, rights to economic development. Mm. Do you know that as a person with disability, we can contribute 7% of Nigeria's GDP yeah. if we are given the opportunity and the support. So we are productive. We have the potentials. We have the rights and the gifts. We have the talent to become great leaders. We can have citizens with disabilities that are senators, <clears throat> House of Reps, mm -hmm. House of Assembly members, even presidents. We can achieve it. Mm -hmm. U.S. had a president with disability, and it was during his time that he changed so many things in U.S. that today, you, you, U.S. citizens are enjoying. It's a great achievement because there are some people that cannot drive to Nasarawa. Yeah. You know, they are scared of the highway and all that. Everything in life has to do with determination. Yes, sure. Just believe you can do it. Wow, well okay. done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your story has been so, so inspiring. Thank you. And I know that it will inspire a lot of people out there yeah. who will wake up today and say, if Lois can do it, yeah. then I can do it. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving You're us your welcome. time. Thank you for staying with us on Against All Odds. What have they said to you? What has been your story? Did that self-esteem, low esteem happen to you? Did you tell yourself you're not capable or, you know, you're not just worthy to be among them? It is all about you. To dissuade it, to tell yourself, 
even though I have found myself in this situation, I can make the best use of it. Talking to Lois today, being part of her life, has encouraged me greatly. And I hope it has done the same to you. This is a challenge thrown to you. Wake up, pick up that challenge, and make yourself proud. Let's do this again. Next week, same time. My name, Toshima Pius Ikerafi. Bye. Thank you.